Geekazine and Geek Smack is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another episode, episode number 195 of Geek Smack, the Geek Podcast. Geek Smack Podcast. Anyway, we use that usual scrubby. We got all this great stuff. We're going to be talking about the Android Trojan horse that they found, cloud adding YouTube service, some cool geek stuff over at Meowtown, and all this other stuff. And of course, deep vein thrombosis. For some of you gamers, you need to be aware of this. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Shows brought to you by Go to Assist. Go over to gotoassist.com forward slash podcast for a 30 day free trial of this great remote software. Also by Carbonite. Back it up now because you never know if you'll get a chance to back it up later over at carbonite.com. Go over to carbonite.com. Get that 15 day free trial when you're ready to purchase. Use the code TPN and you'll get two months for free. Let's get into your Geek Smack right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Jeffrey Powers. Welcome to another episode of the wonderful thing we call Geek Smack, where we smack the heck out of the tech and the geek like you would smack out, I don't know, some with some brass knuckles that double as a bag holder. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a whole bunch more. We're going to talk tech news. We're going to talk geek news. Go over to geekazine.com. That's where you go to get all the information. You can get the show notes. You can sign up for the RSSs. You can get it over on iTunes. You can get it over on Zoom. You can get it over on Tech Podcast, which we're a very proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Go over to techpodcast.com. You can check out the audio show and the video show. And, of course, techpodcast.tv if you want to check out all the member child-safe and friendly shows. That's over on techpodcast.com. It's been a great week. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've been making some plans. I've been working on my Kickstarter stuff. I don't know if you've uh, noticed, but I'm trying to raise some money so we can continue the special media feed, and that's over at kickstarter.com. If you go over to geekazine.com forward slash kickstarter, kickstarter, that'll get you more information on what's going on over there. Otherwise, uh, last week had a pretty low-key week. Um, I did have, I told you last uh, last week, I had a kidney stone, uh, and of course that ended up passing on Thursday, which of course meant we did know five tech things you should know about. But there will be a five tech things you should know about this week. Working on some new segments, and I got a great idea that I think you guys will like. But enough about me, enough about Geekazine. Go over to Geekazine if you want more information and subscribe. Of course, sign up for the newsletter. We're changing the newsletter over to a Google group. Um, so you'll have to, you'll have to sign up there trying to get that all set up, but I think I hit a threshold and they didn't, they didn't transfer over the names right now. So I got to do it in little bits and pieces, kind of weird. But anyway, let's get into your tech smack for to this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start over at readwriteweb.com. And yes, there is a brand new Android Trojan that basically records phone conversations and records it to an SD card. Um, what happens is it's, it's titled golddream.a. has the ability to record the phone conversation. Then it'll store them into the SD card. Uh, there's apparently a configuration where it can download it later or something like that. But if you are looking, look on your SD card. Look for some files that look kind of weird. Um, they have an extension. They talk about it here at Read Write Web. There is an ex extension. I think it's called AMR. So you look for the AMR extension. 
um, or any files that are AMR files, and then you know that you've got a problem. They're, they're working on solutions right now, but you've got to be aware of it. If you've got an Android phone, take a look at this article over at readwriteweb.com. Of course, you can get the show notes over at geekazine.com and get more information from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Apple has done it. Of course, they talked about the iCloud, but now here it is, the iCloud. Oh, that stretched a little bit too much than expected. Uh, the iCloud is now in beta, so you can now get into it. Um, I was looking around. I haven't had a chance to really play with uh, play with where it is and, and try and figure out where it is. So uh, once once I get in there, I'll I'll get into iCloud and play with it. I've been playing with so many cloud based services right now. It's crazy. I mean, you got the Google Music Cloud. You have Amazon's cloud. You have well, I have my own personal cloud technically in different areas. I've got a Pogo plug, which is a cloud. You got a Dropbox, which could be a cloud. Um, there's just so many different clouds there. It, it's it's crazy. And then of course I go into the cloud and put stuff into the cloud. That's me. That's what I do. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get it all figured out. But the, the real question is with all this cloud data, you start putting stuff here, you put start putting stuff here, you put stuff over here, you put stuff over here. Will you remember where your data is or will you decide i'm just going to go with this one cloud drive and be done with it let me know what do you are you going to go with icloud or you, you like amazon's cloud or are you going with a different cloud of your own let me know over at geekazine that's my twitter handle or geekazine at gmail.com in the meantime you can go over to sanfrancisco.ibtimes.com once again in the show notes just click on the link and that'll show you where i was talking about that all right, let's move over here. Wi-Fi 802.22 technology. I reported it over on Google Plus uh, earlier this week. Basically, it's a new protocol in wireless standards that actually uses UHF and VHF bands to actually create a broadband wireless internet access that could go up, up to 60, was it 60 miles? Yeah, 60 miles. So I could actually set up my Wi-Fi system here and run it on this, on this router. And then I could be clear over on the other side of town, find my wireless access point, get in there and use my wireless. That's pretty cool. Of course, I don't know, as you get farther away, it's going to get harder. The signal's going to get harder and harder to go through. And of course, once everybody, st if everybody starts using it, then everybody's going to be mixing and matching and so on and so forth. And data is going to be flinging like politicians fling mud. And it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm wondering how they're going to keep that safe, how they're going to keep that secure, how they're going to keep that uh, important to you and your data. Uh, so, but the bottom line is it could also mean the end of smartphone data plants. No more 3G, no more 4G, because you can just hook up to a wireless network and, and get information like that. They can ground all that stuff and really give you a network that will work. And think about it. If, if, you're a, if you have a campus, if you work at a school campus, you can set up wireless nodes with this 802.22 protocol and people will be able to access your stuff. Now, of course, there's two parts to it. The first part is, of course, the... The wireless access for one person that's 60 miles but once you start putting more people on it it's got to do more work um, when we went out to hp discover we found out about flex networking and we talked about these routers that actually could connect up to 55 people into a, a smaller room now that room kind of like the si this size right here so once you connect up more people it gets a little bit harder to kind of figure out where things are going because it's still got to broadcast all over the place We'll see what happens. Of course, this is a few years out, but it's really cool technology. And I can't wait for these routers to come out because I just want to have a router that when I go to uh, go in and mow the lawn, it's always connected up to my Wi-Fi. And that's, that's all I really care about right now. If you want to read more about this, this is over on SlashGear.com. Check this out. But uh, this is the future, the next version of wireless. More distance and better access. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go over to uh, KWCH is where I got this. And what happened there? Okay, it's in Wichita, Kansas. Basically, they're talking about AT&T throttling the heavy data users. And let's talk a little bit about that. 
Now, you got to remember, first and foremost, this is going to be for a very limited few people. Think about it. I have, this is the iPhone 3GS. I bought this two years ago, and it just, my AT&T contract just went to two-year default. If I make any changes to this contract, that means I lose my unlimited plan. So if I add text messaging, and they tried it a couple weeks ago, they sent me a text message saying, oh, you got to add this because it's really cool feature. And it's like, if I add that feature, I lose my unlimited data plan. Now, the reality is I don't go above two gigabytes too much on per month on my data phone because I'm always hooked up to some Wi-Fi or something like that because it's a lot faster, a lot better, so on and so forth. But there are some people that are mostly on 3G and they hog the heck out of their data plans. They use like four, five, 10 gig. They're watching movies all the time. They're using their Pandora all the time. They're playing games all the time. And that can really throttle a network. Now, once you take out, you, you separate it from all these unlimited users, which there's not that many anymore. I mean, everybody that still has an unlimited plan before they switched it over, most of them, their, their two-year contracts running up and they're buying new phones and therefore they're buying new plans. And then, of course, the people that are using more than two gigabyte network then they're going to get throttled down to 256 kilobits per second. That's how it's going to work. It's not the fact that you, uh, that you're, you or mine, uh, my networks are going to be slowed down. It's the fact that these people that are using over two gigabytes are going to be throttled down a little bit once they hit that. And that's only for the month. When the, when the, the new billing cycle starts, everything gets reset and they go back to a regular speed. So in all reality, this is a, an interesting throttling plan, but it's only going to affect, gosh, probably less than 1% of America that uses their smartphone that way. That's how it works. And I don't have any problem with this. So you make your own decision. You let me know at Geekazine is my Twitter handle, geekazine at gmail.com. If you want to pose your opinions or questions or anything like that. In the meantime, check this out. Of course, like I said, we'll have this in the show notes so you can check out the news article. All right, let's talk a little bit about Clout. You probably heard about this, but Clout has added YouTube service, which is really cool. Of course, uh, right now, Clout was doing Twitter service and they were doing Facebook service. My Clout score was about 61. I haven't checked my new Clout score now that YouTube's in the mix, but every time a new social network gets put into the mix, then all of a sudden my Clout score changes a little bit. I'm assuming it dropped down a little bit more because my YouTube channel is not really there it's actually my youtube channel was under a different name so i'd have to pair it up together so it would know where i am what i do but then it can actually recalculate the clout score so we'll see what happens i haven't tried it yet but if you want to check it out go over to mashable.com they got a great article over here about that fcc regulations you probably heard about this this is actually pretty cool fcc has decided to put on a new regulation. Now, this isn't for the companies like Viacom or anything like that. Think about it. You're, uh, you're watching TV, and you watch... All of a sudden, this little scrolling thing goes on the bottom saying, uh, Dish users, you are in threat of losing all your Viacom channels. If we don't figure out a new bill, you've got to call your cable provider so this doesn't happen. Now, for something like Viacom, that's, that's something that they do on a regular basis. It seems that every year they have a new renegotiation. We see that little blue line, and we go, oh, my God, we got to go call our cable provider or whatever. Well, some of these channels are one-horse one ponies, you know, uh, shows that channels that don't have a big network behind them. Um, they're just starting out and stuff like that. So the cable companies could just go, you know, we, we don't like your contract. We're just gone. And they could just take the channel off. Well, this new bill, or I guess, or law, or the thing for the FCC, whatever you want to call it, is a way to keep these one-channel one uh, cable companies on Dish Network, on, uh, on DirecTV, on the regular cable networks. And I think it's a great idea because of the fact that if all of a sudden they, they find that, hey, we're not, on, uh, we're not on Comcast anymore the next day, we're not on Comcast anymore, what happened? then they lose revenue big time, as opposed to something like Viacom, which owns CBS and, and all these other channels. You know, if they get black, blacked out from Comcast, they have some time, they lose money, but they still have time to be able to fix it and, and get it back up. And they have a bigger base. 
whereas some of these other channels are just gone and that's it. So I, I like this law. It's, it's actually pretty cool on how this works. So the, the small guys get an actual chance to really uh, not get taken off your, your regular cable channel lineup. Then again, I don't have a cable channel lineup. I've cut my cord about two years ago, so you should too. Get yourself a Roku. That's what I say. So Anyway, if you want to check out more, go over to digitaltrends.com and go from there. If you want to get a Roku, all you have to do is go over to uh, bit.ly forward slash geekroku. And of course, that helps Geekazine. Uh, helps Geekazine, period. So. All right, you probably heard about this. Foxconn is trying to make some changes here, and they want to get rid of their workers because heck, they keep dying. Now, you, I'm not, I joked about that, yeah, but it's kind of a serious thing. Foxconn's really not a, a great place to work, at least from all the news that we get from Foxconn. But now, it really doesn't matter because they're going to try and replace as much of their workforce as possible with robots. Just kind of like a car assembly line and stuff like that. You'll get replaced by robots and, and then you can get, you get reassigned and those that don't have reassignments are pretty much uh, done over at Foxconn. So, I don't know, I, I, I don't like the way the business is run, and of course the business is part of Apple. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, how Apple leverages their money to get companies like Foxconn in their back pocket. So, whatever happens here uh, is, is to increase productivity. And the better part about having robots over here is we'll probably get less leak information in... Uh, in the next iPad or the next iPhone 5 than we would normally get. I don't know. Make your own judgment. Let me know what you think. Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Of course, geekazine at gmail.com. Go over to cnet.com for that news information. Going from CNET over to Tom's Hardware, Google's estimated to have about 900,000 servers. We had a small debate about that over on Google Plus today because uh, somebody said, well, I thought they already hit a million servers. The reality is they add servers and then they retire servers and they probably take servers and combine them you know like a server from five years ago is not as powerful as a server today so you put that server in and it's like okay well we can take that server that server that server put it in a virtual environment and there it is so it's shrinking down to nine hundred thousand so i don't know if it's a good thing that they're going they're they're at nine hundred thousand or it's a good thing that they're shrinking to nine hundred thousand and even more i don't know Pretty cool stuff if you want to check it out. Like I said, tomshardware.uk for more information. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we talked about this last week. We had, uh, I think it was on Andrew Edwards' site, he talked about a watch that, uh, that hooked up via Bluetooth to your, to your phone. And then if you got a text message, if you got a call, you looked at your watch and it told you a little bit more about this. Well... This is what's called wearable tech, and there's more and more we're getting into this new realm. I think this is, of course, the next level of connection is a wearable tech. So you don't have to pull out your smartphone every single time to do something. If you got a scheduled appointment, you look at your watch. If you don't wear a watch, maybe it'll be on a ring. If you don't have a ring, maybe it'll be a necklace. If you don't have a necklace, I don't know, you just, uh, you're not wearing jewelry. It's What can you do? But these little extra toys or tech items can help you without you having to do it without having to do much like for instance when i'm in the car the one thing that i hate is when i get a phone call and i forgot to turn on the bluetooth and i gotta kind of wrestle around to try and get into the pocket to pull out the smartphone to figure out what's going on or i just have to let it go and and have that thing vibrate for about 20 seconds and hopefully they don't call back three or four times but now I could just kind of look at my watch or I could have it on the car where all of a sudden I look at the car. It's like there's a text message. There's a there's a phone call from so and so I can take it there. That's pretty cool. So we're getting into newer wear wearable tech is what it's called. It's the it's the new hot term. So uh, if you hear that, that's that's what it is. So but anyway, if you want to read more about that, go over to PCMag.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, that's the end of the tech smack. We're going to get in your Geek Smack in a couple minutes here, but we got a new segment coming on. It's called Geek Smack Crap, and it's right after this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this show is brought to you. Geek Smack, of course, is brought to you by the friends over at Citrix and go to Assist Express. You know, supporting somebody can be kind of difficult, and uh, you want to be able to support somebody a little bit easier, a little bit smarter, 
and you don't have to go you don't want to go and travel everywhere i mean you could be even traveling you could be in like new york you could be in australia or something like that and all of a sudden somebody has a problem and you're like going well i can't help you i can't fix that because i'm here well now you can with citrix and go to assist express you don't have to give away your business to anybody you can keep it yourself get up on an internet connection they put in a nine digit number into a web page you access their computer they access your computer if you choose there's many different ways you can do it you can use it as a install tool you can use it as a service pack upgrade tool you can use it as a training tool you can teach somebody how to do something it's like if, if your mom's going where's the control panel you go okay let's get up on that go to assist a session and then I'm gonna show you hit the start button go over to control panel there it is and you can do it again and again and again so when mom calls you like 1500 times you can always help her and train her and show you her how to how it works or she shows you how it works however 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 that works so but anyway that's the power of citrix and go to assist express special offer all you have to do is go over to go to assist.com forward slash podcast and you'll get a 30-day free trial of this great software put it into your it toolbox put it into your training toolbox and see the power of go to assist express all you have to do is go to over to go to assist.com and forward slash podcast and that'll get you a 30-day free trial over at go to assist express support smarter that way have you ever thought about how much of your life is on your computer if you lost it all when your files are backed up with carbonite you'll be able to get them back with just a few clicks and of course we're also brought to you by carbonite.com back it up now because you'll know you never know when you'll never have a chance to back it up again I have three computers down here and each computer has very important files on it and I back them up a lot and I back them up to other hard drives and those hard drives could have failures Carbonite.com, I back it up there. It backs up to a secure server and the cloud, so it's not even on site. And they even run backups on their servers. So if they have a server failure, they have a backup of your file. So you've got basically about seven, eight, nine different backups of a file your pictures, your documents, your life online. This is a great program. Try it out. Try it out yourself for 15 days for free. When you decide to buy, you get that one year for $59, but we're going to give you two months for free. All you have to do is enter in the promo code TPN. Promo code TPN will get you two months for free when you purchase a year over at Carbonite.com. Back it up now because you never know if you can be able to back it up later over at Carbonite.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the uh, camera. Yeah, that's interesting. Hey, look, it's a bottle of Windex. This is not geek crap, smack crap. This is good stuff. This cleans windows and stuff like that. So, But you don't need to see that. You need to see the arm behind me. You need to see the rabbit behind me. You need to see the cool geek smack crap. So let's get into your geek smack crap today. We're going to start over at storeenvy.com and check this out. It is uh meow town cube print it's a, apparently a print of somebody that looks like a voltron and uh they kind of took cats and made it all cute and everything like that so if you uh if you're a bad guy watch out for meowtron is coming after you it's 45 dollars, so you could actually have this print onto your wall within a couple weeks so go over there to uh, meowtron and uh, storeenvy.com and check that out of course once again we have it in the show notes so don't worry, you can get it there. But then again, hey, if you need to give out some gifts, hey, this is a great program or a great item to do so. Because not only is it gift wrap, but it's also uh, those little circle puzzle thingies. Uh, I, what do they call these games? It's, it's not crossword. It's a, it's a word, uh, word solution. Find the different words and stuff like that. So you can, you can kind of start it out. You can play the game yourself while you're waiting to give this gift. And I'm kind of wondering if this is something that you'll start going, well, um, I've played the game and now I've got to wrap the gift. Uh, I don't have time to wrap the gift. So the gifts kind of get a little bit weird wrapped or something like that. You just kind of resist the urge to, uh, I guess, play the word game there. 
And of course, when somebody gets the gift, do they rip it open or do they play and do they figure out all the words before they open it? You can kind of make a little contest out of that too, if you think about it. It's like you get 10 words, you get to open this gift. If you can't find the 10 words, well, you don't get to open the gift. Sorry. So if you want to check that out, it's over at designerdaily.com. Two more things over on Geek Crap. Check this out. This isn't really for sale. This is just a proof of concept. Somebody wanted to create something. And this is a, uh, what this is, a, a, a waffle iron that actually makes keyboard-shaped waffles. Um, Chris Domino it did it in part of a group exhibit for the School of Visual Arts. So, like I said, it's not something you can purchase, but I really hope that he decides to give this design to somebody. Because I'd love to have a keyboard waffle iron, maybe even a keyboard waffle iron with a mouse waffle iron and maybe a Kinect waffle iron because I don't have a Kinect player or an Xbox waffle iron because I don't have an Xbox. That'd be kind of cool. But then I'd have to eat the gaming system. Then I wouldn't have it again. So it's kind of back and forth. But anyway, if you want to check this out, this is over at treehugger.com. Last Geek Smack crap here. Whoa. Hey, take a, or as Joey would say, whoa. Check this out. It's, you, you look at them, it's, they look like brass knuckles, but they're not. They're grocery bag handles. And of course, this is over in China. Um, don't know price. This is, a, I found this over on somebody's website that just took a picture of it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's just, oh, wow. You're, you're walking down the street and you're just holding your bags and somebody comes up and give me all your money. And you just like drop the bags and go, all right, you ready to go? Let's go. Come on. Put them up. I don't know. That's the over on the Geek Smack crap. That is Geek Smack crap. Geek Smack crap. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into your Geek Smack news. Geek Smack. All right, for some of you action figure lovers out there, this is a great little program right here. Check this out. You're going, well, it's a stormtrooper with somebody's face on it. Well, it's not somebody's face. It could be your face in all reality. What this is is a company called Clone Factory, and they make 3D models, and they started with 3D models for uh, for uh, women to have uh, to create dolls for their wedding experience. So you could have a, uh, uh, dolls made up of you and the hubby, so you could, it'd be something cooler to have, maybe on top of a cake or, or around or something like that. Maybe the whole wedding party and then you can give them out. But people are using them to create other things. Like, for instance, this Stormtrooper doll. Pretty cool. I went over to the website. I couldn't find any real prices. But then again, the website's in Japanese. And, of course, I was translating it. But uh, it really didn't translate. I couldn't find out where the prices were on that. Um, it does use 3D printing. And uh, and uh, from what I understand, it does cost. Let's see if it has it on this. Uh, this is over on Geeko System, which, which was the website I showed you. Uh, the price for it is 138,000 yen or $1,700. So I guess it's a little bit out of price range. But now that people are working with 3D printers in the United States, you might be able to make yourself something a little bit cheaper. But this is kind of cool. Uh, you can make it in different uh, different types of dolls. It's a great wedding gift to give out to somebody. But would you actually create an action figure of yourself? Maybe a stormtrooper or something like that? Maybe muscle yourself up ah, i'm here i'm gonna come after you i don't know let me know at geekazine and go from there all right that was like i said that was over on geekosystem.com can you survive a zombie attack most of us can but you can train for it over in baltimore and you go what baltimore on october 22nd is having a 5K zombie run. You can either be a zombie or you can be a living person. You have an undead area and you have a safe zone. Um, you basically run, either you're running as a zombie after a human or you're running as a human away from a zombie. Depends on how you really want to get your fitness off. <laughs> but of course, you know, as in zombie land, they say cardio is a very important thing. Not only that, but also double taps and don't go to the bathroom. So you might want to go to the bathroom before you go and uh, check this out because you never know when the zombie, uh, evil clown zombie is going to be sitting there in your bathroom waiting for you. Just not going to. Uh, that freaked me out. Freaked me out completely. So if you want to check this out, go over to MNN. MNN. That's Michael Distress 
this website to find out more. Um, are you going to be doing this in Baltimore? Let me know. At Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Of course, geekazine at gmail.com. All right. Hooked on Ads has this pretty cool thing. Uh, it's called the 3M ad. And here, let's show you this. Basically, it's supposed to be $3 million encased in glass in what's called 3M security glass. In all reality, it's not $3 million. It's about $500 of real money and about a whole bunch of paper money. And the whole idea is they challenge you to break this glass. If you can break this glass, now, will, they'll tell you the stipulations in a second, but if you break this glass, you can get $3 million. That's a great ad. But here's the stipulation. You can only use your feet. So you can't bring a rocket launcher. You can't bring a machine gun. You can't bring a sledgehammer. You can't bring Thor the Conqueror and use his hammer. He's got to use his feet. So unless you're a superhero, then you you can give it a try. And, and, and maybe eventually once people start really kicking it, it'll wear down and it'll finally smash. But it's doing two things. It's showing everybody what the safety security glass does, first of all. And second of all, it shows you uh, how, how what they're putting up for if somebody does compromise it. And it could happen. It could easily happen. You just got to think about soft spots and and all that mathematical stuff i'm not going to think about that stuff i'm just going to kind of go okay pretty cool so if you want to check it out go over to hookedonads.com. pretty cool stuff last part of geek smack and we'll get you into your special part and then we'll go and say bye-bye don't want to say bye-bye but we do anyway this is over on make.com if you're a cacti lover or a cactus lover or whatever you want to call it you can create your own little cactus you, all you need is some garden hose and some cable ties and, of course, some whatever to make flowers. Uh, they, they, they use uh, garden hose spigots. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's artist Brian Jewett, and he made these, uh, these cacti using uh, coil baskets and garden hose and cable ties and spigot handles. So if you are a cactus lover, you might want to check that out. A kick, Cactus Geek, I guess. And that's over at makezine.com. And that does bring us to the special part. Oh, I got one more. Where did I go with that? I think I went back. Yeah, I went back and forth. Sorry. Got one more article here for the... Uh, good, an extra article. Encore article, we'll call it. Geeky Gadgets. Love this. Check this out. Now, if you remember... If you were around in the 70s and 80s, you might have seen this on people's coffee tables. This big old thing that was in the middle, and of course you opened up the top, and it was lighter. So you could light cigarettes. Nobody could run away with your lighter. Well, this one is kind of the same function, except it's made out of Legos, for all you Lego geeks out there. And of course, it's designed like a dragon. So you can light yourself a cigarette, or light, light some incense if you don't smoke or anything like that. And put it on the center coffee table as as a uh, as a centerpiece, as a talkative piece, and get more and, and do more on that. Uh, uh, that's a proof of concept thing, so I don't think there's a price to it. But uh, but let me know. What do you have? You ever made anything Legos? It's kind of out of the Lego boundaries, the Lego box, or anything like that. Let me know at Geekazine. I got a friend that's got tons, tons of Legos. He does the full collection he makes them he makes the models he takes them down he breaks them up sometimes he glues them together and he's a lego freak but if you got some cool lego stuff i'd love to see it let me know at geekazine or geekazine at gmail.com now after that encore message let's get this going and then we will be right back on geek smack oh the segment let's get into the cloud Jeff put something into the cloud Bolt. All right, what do we got today? We're just walking along, just enjoying a little bit of life here. Going along. And... Hey, it's the Gmail man. He's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. He's the Gmail man. Yeah. Hey, the Gmail man. Let's put that in the cloud. All right, we got that in the cloud. Remember, you can actually get Geekazine over at Stitcher.com. Go over to Stitcher.com forward slash geek and get the audio version for your mobile device, your Apple, iPhone, your Blackberry, your Android, your Palm Pre, anything that's mobile. Even iPad, you can get the Stitcher app. Go over to Stitcher.com forward slash geek, enter in your email address, 
download the mobile application and you have an opportunity to win a hundred dollars so put in your email and good luck over at stitcher.com forward slash geek all right finally ladies and gentlemen playing video games without a break can kill you there we go this is over on msnbc.msn.com I can say it, msnbc.msn.com. It's actually very, very serious. A kid by the name of Chris Stan, Stanwick? Stan, Stanithforth, excuse me. He's from England. He uh, was about 20 years old, and he died in May after spending a whole night playing Xbox, and uh, Xbox 360, that is. And they found out the reason why was because he was sitting that whole time. He didn't stand up. He didn't, I don't know if he went to the bathroom or not. Uh, that's beyond the point. But the bottom line is he sat so much that he had a... He, developed a, uh, what's called deep vein thrombosis or a blood clot in his leg. When he stood up, the blood clot freed and went into his heart and basically stopped his heart. Now, I just watched, uh, not Burn Nose, but uh, uh, Royal Pains, uh, the episode of Royal Pains where, they, where he treated the uh, patient because she sat in the car for five hours and developed deep vein thrombosis. So this is a very important, very, very uh, serious issue. And there's so many ways you can get deep vein thrombosis because you're, you're sitting for a long period of time. Whether you're playing games, whether you're watching movies, whether you're driving in your car, whether you're flying in a plane. And that's the key right there. If you're flying in the plane, because the, the pilots and, and the stewardess, they basically say, hey, if you don't have to get up, don't get up, stay in your seat, stay buckled in. And that's not good for your legs. So we're going to show you, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to kind of avoid any type of deep vein thrombosis. The first one, straight up stretch, stretch your, stretch your legs, Try to stretch your whole body because it helps your back, it helps you keep loose, especially if you're in coach. It's just a uh, horrible, horrible seating sometimes. And then when you're in your seat, of course, you get uncomfortable and you have to wrestle around a little bit. There are some exercises you can do for one thing. Um, being a drummer, I always do this all the time just because I'm a drummer, but kind of tap your feet. Bring the foot all the way up and then tap it down and then all the way up and then tap it down. Just go like that. Go back and forth like little fins, like you're paddling or something like that. That, of course, brings circulation. If you need to stand up, stand up. Of course, if your stewardess is saying you got to stay in your seat, we've got some major turbulence, you need to sit down, uh, then you got to sit down. But stand up when you get those chances to stand up. Uh, take a small walk, take a bathroom break. Even though if you don't have to go to the bathroom, go blow your nose or go take a look at your face or something like that. Come back, sit down and relax and get going there. And of course, hey, if you have the opportunity to take the, what, what you stuff underneath your seat and put it in the overhead cabinet, do that. And do so much more. You can, you can do some sitting legs. You can do lots of different stretches. You can... Uh, Lots of different ways to keep yourself from having deep vein thrombosis. And there's a lot of people that do it. I don't know if you remember that commercial from like a few years ago. Ian, uh, Ian and I had the name in my head. I got it right here. Hold on a second. Ian uh, from uh, Jethro Tull. Ian, uh, I lost the name here. Ian Anderson. That's the name from Jethro Tull. Of course, he had that commercial because when he played, he played flute and he had his uh, his leg like right here. And that's how he developed the deep vein thrombosis because his foot was resting like that. And he'd do that for hours. And he, he caused uh, blood clots. So it's a very serious thing, especially for some of you gamers. You, not only do you need some comfortable chairs, but you need to be able to stand sometimes, lie down a little bit, kind of move around. Don't be in one place at the same time. Because, you know, we want to see you live. We want to see you kill all those ogres and whatever, everything else out there. So, sorry to hear about it with Chris, but uh, we have to, it has to, you have to move on and go from there. So, that's over at, where did I do that article at? That was over at uh, msn.com. You can check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Let's, let's switch over to this camera. That it does it for the Geek Smack episode for this week. I hope you had a great time. Hope you liked the Geek Smack crap. Of course, I hope you liked uh, Into the Cloud. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you hate. What you, if you, the bunny if the bunny's freaking you out, let me know at Geekazine Twitter handle Geekazine. 
at gmail.com is the email address, and feel free to email me on anything. Of course, I do have the phone number, 608-205-4378, if you want to call, too. That does it for this episode of Geek Smack. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. Watch some of our other shows, The 5 Tech Things You Should Know About. Of course, The Day in Tech History, which is a daily podcast of tech history and runs seven days a week, 365 days a year. The OTT, which we're trying to do some hangouts for. So if you're on Google Plus and you want to hang out and talk about how you cut your cord, let me know and we'll get you in the circle. And we do that every single Sunday night. And then, of course, the special media feed when I go out to those events. I will put it in there. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. Go over to TPN for some other great member shows like uh, Caffeination Podcast, Totally Cool Tech Podcast, Geek News Central, and so on and so forth. Thanks again, and we will see you next time on Geek Smack next week at the same Geek Smack time, the same Geek Smack channel. Take care.